Lord, you're now watching the Victory in Jesus telecast. I'm Evangelist Kevin Honeycutt. We're so glad to be here, live right here at the station. We sure, we sure do hope and trust the Lord's been good to you. Hey, all this weekend, hope and trust you had a wonderful, blessed weekend. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're no longer in the summer season. We are in the fall season. Amen. And we're thanking God for every season, for the spring, summer, fall, and winter. We want to thank God for every day. And I hope you can do the same. And we just want to remind you, encourage you, God is alive. Jesus cares for you. No matter what anybody says, Jesus cares for you. Amen. We've been busy. Got some emails today. Uh, some monies that we sent over to Costa Rica. More Bibles and some food. And I believe they got a little bit of medicines, but more Bibles. Again, the word over there. Hallelujah. People's hearing about Jesus. Amen. They're accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Woo! We're happy. And we're, we're honored. We're privileged to just be a little part of that. And, and we're not tooting our own horn, but we're giving all the honor, all the glory to the Lord. Amen. And we're just thankful for that. And hearing good reports and my son-in-law he's been ministering here we've been busy 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 but that's all right we still love you and we pray for you and we hope you consider us and keep us in prayer me and my family as we're doing what God would have us to do and you know we I've said this before we say it again even more even the more we are living in the last days whether you believe it or not we are living in the last days and Jesus is soon coming. Amen. I do have a word here tonight. Uh, but had a long day, a long night, tired in body, but hey, we are happy in the Lord and we're glad to be back home. Feels good when you're back in your own home and your bed and your and your food and your family. And it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But it feels good being in the house of our Lord. <laughs> feels good when that sweet holy ghost, the sweet holy spirit comes and takes control. Feels good when the Word of God just stirs on the inside and your faith is built, hallelujah, trusting in Jesus. And I'm hoping that you're trusting in Jesus today, right now. Whatever your need is, whatever you're going through, I want to encourage you, trust in the Lord. You might have trust in other things, but you can trust the Lord. God will make a way for you. You might be in a situation and the devil might be around and it might seem like all hope is lost. I know for a fact God can turn it around if you let God turn your situation around for you. How many of you watching right now, before I get in the Word, how many of you watching tonight, you're hurting in your body, you're hurting in, in your mind, maybe you're hurting in your spirit. Is that you tonight? Are you hurting in your body physically and your aches and pains and are you hurting in your mind over and over this thing repeats and in your spirit, are you hurt? Are you hurt? Well, I want you to be encouraged. I'm believing tonight. Oh, hallelujah. I'm believing tonight. The Holy Ghost is going to do a work that nobody else can do. I'm believing God's going to heal your body. I'm believing God's going to touch your mind. I'm believing the Holy Spirit to stir your faith that you believe God for the impossible to become possible. You right there I'm talking to. You're hurting in your body. You're troubled in your mind. You're wounded in your spirit. Ah, hang on and don't touch that dial. I want you to be encouraged and know that God cares for you. I want you to know, oh, Jesus, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Healing for your body, healing for your mind, and healing for your spirit. Will you take that tonight? Lift up your hands right now where you're at. Come on, lift up your hands. Have a talk with Jesus right now. Now I want to pray with you. You need a touch. I want to pray with you right now. I didn't come to play. Uh -uh. I'm about my father's business. You're sick in body, troubled in mind, and you're hurting, wounded in your spirit lift up your hands right now father in the mighty powerful name of Jesus Christ and that's we come before you and Lord before we get into this word and this message I feel this in my spirit Lord everyone who's hurting in the body I come against every foul spirit of infirmity every ache every pain Lord oh we plead the blood of Jesus where they're at Lord and Lord we just oh Lord heal them and touch them let the pain go let the torment go Lord they're troubled in their mind I pray the peace of God right there where they are. Oh, Lord, give them peace tonight. They're troubled or wounded in their spirit. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, wrap your arms of love and compassion around them. Oh, sweet Holy Ghost, sweet Holy Spirit, do a work here tonight. Everyone in this viewing audience and the sound of my voice, I speak to them, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. 
Amen, amen. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. And if you believe that and you receive that, you ought to praise God and say, thank you, Lord, for my healing. Thank you, Lord, the pain's going away. Come on, tell him. Thank you, Lord, my trouble in my mind's going. Thank you, Lord, I was wounded, but I'm, I'm feeling better, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here in 1 Corinthians, uh, here in Acts chapter number 2, let me start there. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter number 2, we have the facts of the story where Jesus had told the disciples, uh, he's, he was speaking there in Acts chapter 1, he said, John truly baptized you with the Holy, uh, baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, or not many days after this. And it's, it's going to be like this in verse 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you're going to be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all over the world. Hallelujah. And when he's spoken these things in verse 9 of chapter 1 of the book of Acts, ah, while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven uh, as two uh, uh, as he went up towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel and they said like this, ye men of Galilee why stand ye gate and up into heaven. Why do you look like you lost your best friend? Why are you so troubled that this Jesus is leaving? That's what they were saying. He said, this same Jesus which is taken up for you into heaven shall come again in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Hallelujah. And here's where I want to go with this. In 1 Corinthians, in chapter number 15, in verse number 1, it reads like this. Now, I'm reading to you from God's Word, the Bible. I know there's many out in America that don't like the Bible, but I love it. I love God's Word. You see, I, 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 see, I see a time right now. America needs revival. America needs God. Come on, somebody shout amen at me. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1, it said, More of them, brethren, he was speaking here. He said, I declare unto you the gospel of which I preached unto you, which ye have also received, and wherein you stand. He said, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. I wonder about people sometimes when they come to church, are they truly believing, or are they believing in vain? I wonder when they're singing gospel, do they really believe in Jesus, who they're singing about, or are they just singing for the money? I wonder when the preacher and the pastor's behind a pulpit, and all they are is no more than a dictator, or a careless one who could care less about the sheep. I wonder, did they really believe or did they believe in vain? Verse number 3 of 1 Corinthians 15, he said, For I delivered unto you, and I have delivered unto you these years, unto you first all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried the third day, hallelujah, or He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. Verse 5, And He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, verse 6, he was seen of above 500 brethren. This is after the resurrection, of whom the greater part remain until this present day. And some are fallen asleep, some went into the Lord at that time he was reading. Verse number 7, and after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And the apostle Paul said, and least of all, he I seen the Lord. Hallelujah. And then verse number 12, he said it like this. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. Isn't that like America today? Today they don't believe that Jesus is alive. Today many of America does not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Today many people believe that Jesus was just a good man or maybe a prophet. But the Bible declares God's holy word declared that Christ rose from the dead. Hallelujah. In verse 13, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Our going to church is vain. Our singing gospel is vain. And here tonight would be in vain. And your faith also would be in vain, the Bible said. Verse 15, and yea, we would be found false witnesses of God if it was if it was true. If Jesus never did die, if Jesus never did rise again, then we would be found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ. Mm, and whom He raised is not up if so be that the dead rise not for if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised 
And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. And ye are not in your sin, and you're yet in your sins, the Bible said. And they are also which are fallen asleep in Christ have perished. He's basically saying, if this is all just a ruse, if this is all make-believe, then it's in vain. Going to church is in vain. Loving your brother is in vain. Helping your sister, helping the neighbor would be in vain. Oh, looking to Jesus, calling upon His name would be in vain if He never rose from the dead. Singing the about Jesus, singing about amazing grace. If Jesus never rose from the dead, then it would all be in vain. You watching this program, if Jesus Christ never rose from the dead, then watching this preacher would just be in vain and a waste of time. That's what he was saying. For if the dead rise not, then Christ, uh, if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, verse 17, then your faith is vain and you're still yet in your sin. Sin Sin which will kill you. Sin which will destroy. Sin, oh, it'll kill you. It'll destroy your life. Sin is a murderer. Sin will kill you. Oh, yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And he said it like this. If, if this that be not true, if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain and you're still yet in your sins. In other words, he's saying there would be no hope. But thank God there is a hope. You can be forgiven of your sins. Thank God there's a hope above all hopes. Hallelujah. Oh, you can know what peace is. You can know what joy is. Oh, you can be saved. You can be healed. God walk with you in the morning. God walk with you in the afternoon. God walk with you. Oh, he's right there with you. Woo! Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I'll go with you all the way. Woo, glory, hallelujah. But if he be not risen from the dead, uh, then our faith is vain and everything I've been doing is in vain. Uh, I wonder though, if Jesus had not been risen, if this, if this is not real, then... How in the world did blind eyes pop open in the name of Jesus Christ? Um, how in the world could deaf ears be unstopped? How in the world could the lame get up and walk? How in the world could God have mercy and forgive someone who should have never had mercy? How in the world could God love someone when everyone else hates them? What is it to this? I tell you what, it's not a fairy tale. God's Word is not a book of fairy tales. God's Word is sure. God's Word is true. And God's Word is is everlasting. He is holy and God's word is holy for Jesus Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Just like the Bible said, you said you're getting passionate about it. Why? Because Jesus saved me. Jesus has forgiven me of my sins. Jesus has blessed me with a beautiful family. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord are right here before me. God blesses me in the country. God will bless me in the city. God's forgiven me. God's loved me. God's given me joy. God's given me a vision I can see. I see things different. I hear things different. I speak things different. I taste things different. Why? Because of God's grace. Because of God's love. Because of God's mercy. Because because of God's wisdom and because of God's power. Jesus loves me and Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Oh, but let me go on and read just a little bit more. Yea, we would be found false witnesses if Jesus had not been risen from the dead. And if Christ be not raised, then your faith is in vain and you would still yet be in your sins. And they also which had fallen asleep in Christ would perish if in this life only we have hope in Christ and we are of all men most miserable but now now the bible says in verse 20 of 1st corinthians chapter 15 but now whoo, i should have been dead but now is christ risen from the dead but now is christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept hallelujah i want to look in verse uh number 35 it said it like this hallelujah uh, verse 35 says, But some men will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Well, in verse 39, I believe we can find an answer. All flesh, in verse 39 of 1 Corinthians 15, All flesh is not the same kind of flesh. For, uh, there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fishes, and another of birds. The Bible said in verse 40, There are celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, heavenly bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another and there is one glory of the sun another glory of the moon another glory of the stars for one star is different from another star in glory hallelujah 
Verse 42 said it like this. Thank you, Jesus. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It's, it is sown in corruption. It's raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. But because of Jesus, it's raised in glory. Hallelujah. It's sown in weakness. But because of Jesus, it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body, the Bible says. Oh, but if Jesus had not been raised, would there be any hope? hope for us today. I believe America needs hope. I believe this viewing audience needs hope. I believe we need revival. America needs revival. America needs God. How can you say that preacher? I can easily say that we need God. I can easily say we need God's word, his grace, his love and his mercy. I can easily say we need Jesus Christ. When I see for example, Oklahoma in the middle of the night removes the Ten Commandments from a federal building at nighttime just because a few people got offended when they went to work. I can see that we need a revival when you have the gay colors, the rainbow colors of the gay pride parades, which are all glowing and shining all over our White House. But when it come time to put up a Christian flag, they said, no, we cannot do that. It offended someone when they was walking by the White House. I believe America needs God. I believe we need a Holy Ghost filled, genuine heaven -sent revival when we have school shootings and people still killing people. I was reading today about 11 saints of God, 11 Christians who said we're staying in Syria. We're telling people about Jesus. But don't you know ISIS is there? Yes. But we're telling people about Jesus. Don't you know you can lose your life? Yes. But we're telling people about Jesus Christ. He can save them from their sin. He can heal their broken bodies. He can touch the troubled mind. There's no Nobody in the world like Jesus Christ and they said but don't you know Isis is here I was just reading this and here just a few days ago 11 of them they crucified him they beat him there was a 13 year old boy a Christian they beat him they crucified him they said where is your God now you're an infidel and then there was 11 more women and men who loved Jesus with all their heart and they went to go take their heads. They said, you're infidels. They said, Jesus loves you. God loves you. I forgive you. Jesus forgives you. And while they was praying, they said, Lord, I commended you my spirit. Father, lay not this charge to them. Father, forgive them for they know what, not what they do. And ISIS, ISIS went ahead and chopped their heads off anyways. Why would there be another part of the world that's so hateful towards Christianity? Why would there be a young man who went into a school and shot and killed people who said, I am a Christian. Uh -huh. Think about it for a minute. Think about it just for a minute. Christianity, a belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's not in the grave like Muhammad, not in the grave like Buddha, but Jesus is alive. The cross could not hold him there. The grave could not keep him there. Death had to let go. Hallelujah. And Jesus come out alive in three days just like he said he would. He was alive. He was a scene of above 500 brethren. He's ascended into heaven and one day he's coming back. I'm going to tell you, because of Jesus, I'm changed. Hallelujah. I once was lost. I once was hateful. I once was sinful. I once was a mean man. I once had no future. I once had no promise. But because of Jesus, I'm changed. We shall be changed when we hear this gospel of Jesus Christ. There's there's no other word. No meditation. I met someone here this past weekend. They said, I've got uh, schizophrenia. They said, I've got troubles in my mind. I, I, I'm suicidal. I'm depressed. I'm this. And they said, I meditate. Home. Home. And that helps me get through the day. But I still battle depression. Home. But I still battle suicide. Home. I still am going crazy. Home. Meditation does not help someone. Meditation cannot help it's just a band-aid. But I'll tell you something greater than a band-aid. It is Jesus.
Jesus Christ who's able, woo, glory, 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 to set you free from depression. Somebody, three of you is watching me right now. Tonight, you're battling depression. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. Oh, I'm not happy. Oh, this, that, and the other. And not only depression, but suicide's been knocking on your door. Why should I live? Nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Don't turn that dial. You sit right back down there. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, and those shoes, those funny looking shoes. Uh, nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. I'm going to tell you right now, God loves you. Jesus loves you. The devil don't want you to hear truth. But here's the truth. Jesus loves you. For God so loved the world. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And whosoever should believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Uh, we need revival. When we have an 11 year old that shoots a little 8 year old girl because she wouldn't show him her little puppy. So he goes back in the house and gets a gun and he kills that little girl. When we have racial tensions and fears and outright rebellion towards God's word. Rebellion in the music, in the culture. Rebellion on the movies, in the culture. Rebellion, rebellion. Re we don't want to hear about God. We don't want to hear about Jesus. Let me meditate. Let me get naked. Let me smoke weed. Let me get drunk. Let me be gay or lesbian. Let me alone. Don't tell me about Jesus. But I'm going to tell you, oh, only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can heal. Only Jesus can satisfy your troubled mind and heal your hurting soul. We're in a day and an hour where many are not drawn to God. We, we, we all know that we can clearly see that there are people that are easily being drawn away by their own lust. The lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. People are easily being held captive. Captive. Giving attention to distractions that are drawing people to towards laziness, drawing people towards confusion, drawing people towards compromise. Preach on, preach on. All right. Drawing people towards doubt, unbelief, and fear. The Bible said in Isaiah 29 and verse 13, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is is taught by precept of man. I heard this one individual as he said, I'm, I'm battling depression, I'm suicidal, I'm schizophrenic, I'm, I've got psycho tendencies and, and yet he wants to help little children. He wants to help somebody but he's got to meditate. Om, om, om. Uh, he said he was, he believed he was Christian. He didn't say I, I am a Christian. He said I believe I'm Christian. Let me tell you one thing. If you are a Christian, you'll follow what Jesus said in his word. You may not do it right now. Oh, but when you follow Jesus, you won't be watching everything that's out there. When you follow Jesus and get a hold of God's word, you won't be listening to everything else that everybody else does and everybody else says. And well, you won't be listening to garbage. You won't be listening to sin things. Oh, when you get a hold of Jesus and when you get a hold of God's word, you won't be hanging around those who have corrupt communications and filthy mouth and filthy lifestyles. No, when you get around God and when you get around Jesus and you get God's word on the inside, God's word changes you for better. When you didn't have no love, you'll have love. When you didn't have peace, God will give you peace and contentment for your soul because of Jesus Christ. Amen, preacher. Amen, preacher. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13 said it like this. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope for the end of grace that is to be brought unto you, the revelation of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 tells us that God is the Father of mercy. I don't know about you, but I need God's mercy. Sometimes man will not be merciful to you. Your neighbor may not be merciful to you. Your dog may not even be merciful to you. But God in heaven, our Father in heaven, He is full of mercy. And He is the God of all comfort, who comforts is us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Let me comfort someone right now. You're in trouble? Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is the answer. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow? Jesus is the answer. You don't know about your car. You don't know about your home. You don't know about your children? Jesus is the answer. You don't know about church. You don't know about what the doctor, the surgery is going to do. Jesus Christ is the answer. I'm telling you, we shall be changed. We shall be changed. How is that, Brother Honeycutt? Well, the Bible went on to say it like this in verse 50 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50. It says, Now I say then, brother, flesh and blood, flesh and blood, 
It's not going to, it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to die. But we shall all be changed. Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm going to leave you the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, is going to teach you and train you in all things. I'm going to my Father, but there's going to be a day and an hour when our Father in heaven is going to say, Son, go get my children. Hallelujah. Hey, go get the church. I know people don't believe it. I know they fight even in church we don't believe on this and we fight and discuss and, and, and we argue over the book of Revelation and Daniel and from Genesis to Revelation we can't get along I don't care I'm not focusing on that tonight I'm telling you one thing behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed those believers in Jesus those who said yes to the Lord those who's living according to the word of God those who said Lord Jesus have mercy I don't want to live this way I'm tired of the drug. I'm tired of sin. I need a new walk. I want a new talk. I want to be happy on oh God. Oh Lord, those believers in Jesus Christ who believed in their heart, confess with their mouth, Lord forgive me my sins. Oh God, come into my life. Jesus walk with me. Jesus talk with me. Hallelujah. Those believers who said, Lord forgive me. I don't want to sin no more. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, Lord. I need you every day. I got mad at the dog. Lord, I need you. I got mad at my child. Lord, I need you. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. And I feel like I'm a failure. Lord, I need you. See, there's nobody perfect but Jesus. No one is perfect. We all can trip. We all can fall. We all can make mistakes. But Jesus cares for you. you know, I said it again. Jesus cares for you. And for those who are believing and trusting in the Lord, our world is changing. Trouble is coming to America. I know they don't want to hear it. Preachers don't want to preach it. Pastors don't want to hear it because people will stop with the tide. People will stop with the offering. But watch. All you have to do is watch, listen, pray, discern. Get in your Bible. Read it. Believe it. Take hold of it. He said it like this. We shall all be changed. When? How is this going to happen, brother? How is Jesus coming back for me? Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Won't you just thank God right now? One day, I don't know what's going to happen, but one day we shall be changed. No more pain. No more eyeglasses. No more walkers. No more surgeries. No more cancer. No more diseases. We shall be changed. No more loneliness. No more fear. No more compromise. No more, no more grandchildren problems. No more children problems. No more physical problems. One day, He's coming back and we shall be changed hallelujah in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump the trumpet shall sound the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on immortality Woo! must put on incorruption that this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on hallelujah incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh grave where is thy sting hallelujah oh grave where is thy victory oh death where is thy sting and the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren here it is be ye steadfast unmovable be steadfast in God's Word. Be unmovable in God's Word. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why? Jesus is soon coming. Jesus is soon coming. Jesus Christ is soon coming. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. Jesus is soon coming. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. No man knows it, but our Father in Heaven does. And when He's coming back, we shall be changed. When we believe that God cares for us. When we believe in God's Word. When you believe that Jesus died for you. When you believe that Jesus can forgive you of your sins. Then you shall be changed. My friend, I've got to go. We love you. Keep praying for us. Stay in the Word. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Don't you dare let that devil push you around. We've got victory in Jesus. God bless you. my prayer for each and every one of you.